everybody. I'm Jeff Owens from ClassicHorrors.club. Today, I am in the castle of Elizabeth Bathory, the famous bloody countess, or as we're going to call her today, Countess Dracula. And where are you, Richard? Well, I'm Richard Chamberlain from MonsterMovieKid.wordpress.com. And uh, as you can see behind me, I'm in the laboratory of Baron Frankenstein. And uh, well, we'll soon be seeing his daughter, Tanya Frankenstein, do her own bit of monster creating in uh, Lady Frankenstein from 1971. Is that brain back there? I, I, I recommend you check its hypothal hy hypothalamus. Hypothalamus? Hypothalamus? Yeah, uh, you, don't, you don't want one with a defective hypothalamus. Is there ever a Frankenstein monster that has everything working correctly? I, I don't think so, but I, I've never known the hypothalamus to be the defective part before. Uh, that, that was a new one, yes, which kind of goes with the rest of that film. Is it's, it's a, But at least, you know, it's a different film, yes, but, and it's really pretty to look at in more ways than one. However, at least we get a Frankenstein in that film, yeah. which is more than we can say about Countess Dracula. Spoiler alert. Yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no Frankenstein in Countess Dracula. <laughs> there isn't, no. Yeah. And Which, that would have made a whole different film, yeah. but. Yeah. So I just want to mention real quick, it's February, Valentine's Day. For some reason, we associated that with lovely women, and we chose these two movies for this month. I do want to say, coincidentally, Countess Dracula was released in the UK on Valentine's Day, February 14th in 1971 so we have that little extra bit of synchronicity as well i wonder how many couples went out on valentine's day to see countess dracula and how many you know husbands back in the day perhaps that really paid for that <laughs> and that's something we didn't mention in the audio podcast which by the way everybody we do an audio podcast this is just clips and bonus features that you will not hear on the podcast however this is very brief, and we recommend you go and, and experience the full thing in audio. But what we failed to mention, so that will be one of the bonus features here that isn't in the other one, is that Countess Dracula was a success at the box office. Lady Frankenstein was not. I had kind of a, a, a rough week at work, I guess. I mean, it, it wasn't bad, but I was just really tired every night, and these were both first-time viewings. I had certain preconceptions about both of them uh, and didn't really enjoy either one. I say I did not enjoy watching them. I had struggles with both. However, as we talked on the podcast and as I think about them, I think I, I like the movies okay. I, I need to watch them both again. And so, whereas you might recommend these movies to people to watch, I'm going to recommend them to myself to watch <laughs> again so that I can give them perhaps a more fair assessment. I, my head tells me there are good things in them, and, and I point out a lot of good things in the podcast, but my heart just wasn't in it while I was watching them this time for some reason. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Yeah, and I, I treat them both the same. I think you favored one movie over the other, whereas I just kind of thought they were about the same. Yeah, I, I lean a little bit more towards Countess Dracula. I think it was a better film, better made film. It's a little more cohesive, uh, even though it does have some flaws. Uh, it flows a little bit better than Lady Frankenstein. But again, I, I enjoyed Lady Frankenstein. So Countess Dracula is a notch above, um, maybe, you know, maybe half a star above but it's still enjoyable to watch. Not one of Hammer's best moments, but not one of their worst either. So I kind of feel both films kind of fall in the middle. You know, they're, they're not, uh, they're not the, the bottom of the barrel by far. They're not necessarily, I wouldn't call either of them classics, but they are both enjoyable to watch. And, and it's interesting. They do have kind of some similar themes. They have strong women who, you know, have, visions of, of grandeur to one point or another and well they they kind of take some shortcuts they go down some paths and they ultimately pay the price and if another spoiler alert it doesn't end well for either one by the time we get to the to the end of the films yeah their their films are remarkably similar in fact i didn't even realize it until we started talking about the plots but there are beats and plot points that are almost identical which is an interesting coincidence. 
was a countess young and fair with tender skin and flaxen hair oh countess how do you keep your looks no. what secrets in these ancient books the book what book the chapter on blood sacrifices please help me i don't know what's happened to me say it lovely say it yes 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 i love you Yes. Don't you realize that you get uglier each time you get old? And you can't go on killing forever? Why not? That woman embodies all the virtues. Mistress, friend, and mother in one. Does such a woman exist? <gasps> you know she does. Lovers know how you cling to youth. Dare you tell them the dreadful truth? These walls could tell, but cannot speak of the sudden cry, the muffled shriek. Dobie. Where is she? Look at me, Dobie. Look at me. And what will your daughter say? She arrives tomorrow, and she'll find you. As young as she is, hold me. No, blood. Whose blood? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the most terrifying of them all? The Countess Dracula. Julie. I changed so much. I don't know what's happened to me. Blood. Who's blood? Devil woman. Calling it Dracula is a stretch. Well, calling it a vampire movie is a stretch. Is is a stretch as well. Yes, it's a variation on the theme, but it's about as varied as you could possibly possibly get. And it does have a piercing of a neck, but not by vampire fangs. Right. He said you watched it on Blu-ray, so. Yeah. I mean, there was the the you know quality good on Blu-ray. It was fine. The only well. No, yes, it was a beautiful movie. However, I do not believe high definition does the makeup any favor. The old age makeup is not always very good. You could well, clearly see a line on her forehead where they had applied the the wrinkles or, or whatever. You got the DVD too for that. Yeah, matter. so but maybe I, you can't avoid that at all. I thought there was some good camera work. The scene where she does pierce somebody's neck with the her hairpin, the the, there's a the camera like lens or screen splashes red with, yes. as if it was splashed with blood. That's kind of a cool effect. Oh, that was cool too. Yeah. I do also want to mention that a couple of scenes were threatened uh, by the censors to be removed, and somehow they sweet talked the censors, and the scenes never would have had to be removed. But I just, it's interesting that these scenes without them this definitely would not have been a horror movie. So I just wanted to real quick recap the scenes. From reel four, they were told to remove the shots of the dead prostitute with her slashed wrist and the bowl full of her blood. Remove the shot of the naked countess wiping herself with a bloody sponge as Dobie and Emery enter the room. And then in Rio 5, remove all but a brief flash of the first shot of a naked woman's corpse seen by servants in the cellar and all shots 
of more than one corpse. Do you have anything else to say about Countess Dracula? I would recommend Countess Dracula. Again, it's not um, Hammer's best. It's not their worst, in my opinion. It, it falls, as I said, somewhere in the middle. I think it's a fun film. What evil science was practiced in this laboratory of nightmares? Who is this irresistible creature who has an insatiable love for the dead? What dread terror stalked the townspeople? <laughs> Legend of Frankenstein once again brings terror and nightmare to the screen. Stan! Joseph Cotton is Baron Frankenstein, the scientist who dared to create a monster. Frankenstein. She's beautiful, she's evil, and she'll do anything for love. Think of it. Think of me. Think of possessing me. Would you like to have my body bend to you? Would you like to make love to me? She creates a new, more terrifying monster. I am my father's daughter. <laughs> you are referring to uh, animal transplants. Human. Only the monster she creates can satisfy her strange desires. Frankenstein. It's been 15 to 20 years since I've seen this movie. And it's probably been 15 or 20, well, no, it's been longer than that since I've been aware of it. It was a VHS tape in the video stores. We had it, and the cover of this was so unappealing to me. It just looked uh, like something I don't want to see. It's, it's the the monster it's the horrible makeup it's the <laughs> frumpy outfit it's wearing it's uh and the fact that it was called lady frankenstein and i always i know frankenstein is the man that's the doctor but you look at this and you see the title lady frankenstein and you think that the <laughs> monster is the lady um <laughs> potentially a pregnant lady except the, her bump isn't showing in her stomach it's showing on her head I, looking at it now, the box isn't that bad. The monsters in some of these films and the special effects may not always be A-list. And that's part of the charm. Um, with the monster in this one, we're definitely not A-list special effects. I'm not sure we're in B or C territory. We're, we're definitely... We're definitely... We're lower. further down the alphabet. <laughs> yes. Yes, I don't know that we're we're in Z grade, but we're not nah. very far above. I need a storm for my final step in the electrical storm. For only lightning will give the creature life. Bad. Like some of the little touches though that we haven't seen before like and maybe i was seeing spots but were there bats flying around the body as it was being raised into the skylight um maybe i, I kind of think i remember that maybe i thought that was kind of unique i thought that i kind of uh, like that scene yeah i think i like i did kind of like the. Yeah. i think that was well 
they took the heart and they had this long wire thing that they inserted like into one of the ventricles of the heart. That was like a detail and kind of an interesting little touch I don't think I had seen before. I think there was a missed opportunity, particularly since this is a Euro horror film, to really do a good gore scene. They, you know, it's primitive times and instead of a stethoscope, they have this like funnel-like thing that they put the wide end on his chest and then you put your ear to the, to the, the yeah. thin part. And Joseph Cotton is listening to his heart right before he gets killed and he's killed by the, the monster crushing him or what he gives him a big old bear hug and squeezes uh, yeah. and i'm pretty sure he did that while the doctor was listening with that device and what a perfect opportunity to do a cut shot and show him lying on the ground with this device sticking out of his ear and blood running down and they didn't and maybe that's not how he died but that that was really a missed opportunity to show that this is a early 70s you know euro horror film and for starters, that's an acquired taste. Not not every you can love classic horror films, but there are those of us who who don't appreciate Euro horror. I was I've been very late coming on board to appreciating Euro horror. I am with you on the Euro horror, except I think I've been a fan of it a little bit longer than you have. I would everything you said is true, and with that perspective, I just think this is run-of-the-mill Euro horror. I don't think there's anything distinctive about it, really, that, that stands out to make it be one of the better. She's seducing him, and then Dr. Marshall's, you know, kind of creeping in the background, like, and then once he knows it's his time, comes in, grabs the pillow, and is suffocating Thomas. She stays on, on, on top of Thomas, and then she is clearly... She's aroused by, by the fact that he's getting killed. She's like starts biting her hand and is, I mean, she, did you not catch any of that? I, either I didn't notice that fine nuance or it was a part that was cut or, the, okay. I don't recall that at all. She wasn't like your typical mad scientist necessarily because she, she's created this, this, this being that if, if her whole if her whole purpose was to, you know, to surpass her father's experiments and, and show what, you know, what she really could do, then, you know, we wouldn't have got that final scene, right? Where she's like, you know, make love to me by the fire. And while the, why well, yes, while the, down around her. <laughs> the torch bearing crowd has popped up out of nowhere. I didn't understand quite why that happened at the end the way that it did. And I guess we're just giving spoiler alert here because there's no other way to do it. Yeah. So so Thomas has the 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 mind of, of Dr. Marshall. The body is his body is Thomas, but he's got Dr. Marshall's brain. But there's clearly been, you know, I, to me, there's been a bit of a disconnect, maybe. I don't know, he's not acting like he's acting not a hundred percent like Dr. Marshall, right? Right. I mean, so in the moment where, where he's in, in front of the fireplace with, with Tanya and they're beginning to make love and she's, she's naked and having a good time. And then he just, as, as he's, and he clearly knows what he's doing. He clearly there's, 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 it's a mutual thing. And then he just randomly reaches out, chokes her and kills her. And then, bam, fini, the end pops <laughs> up. Well, I agree that it's abrupt, but I didn't question that. And and again, I'm realizing now for the first time how much the story parallels Countess Dracula. It, when you said they're investigating the murders, that was very similar to what happened in Countess Dracula. But it's also, he's the same as Doby. You know, he hasn't approved of what yeah. um, Talia's been doing. And, you know... He doesn't have a daughter to bring back to kind of stick it to her, but he's got his opportunity to end what she's doing. 
And I, I think guess... the, the mind of Charles, I think just dominated the, the body part of Thomas. And I think that when you say he wasn't acting much like Charles, maybe it's he knew what he had to do or he was figuring out what to do, but it, it made sense to me that he strangled her. Okay. I, you know, uh, my theory. I mean, that's as good a theory as any. Yeah. I will say that the gore was light in this. Yeah. Film. It really was. The definitely we had, we had sex and nudity, but light on the gore. Film historian Roberto Curti believes that the script was inspired from a story called For the Love of Frankenstein, written by Bill Warren and Jack Sparling for the Vampirella comic. I'm looking at it on archive.org right now, and just scanning through that story uh, with the absence of Vampirella narrating, uh, it looks very much like a, a female Frankenstein that's manipulating an older man, putting his brain in a younger body, two monsters fighting at the end, so there could be some validity to that. Very cool. Thanks ever from everyone for watching. And uh, just look right down there to find the full podcast. And uh, we'll uh, see you in a month when we do the next one. Take care.